Hi there, my name is Akinwale Habib. I'm a software engineer with over six years of experience. In the course of my career, I've observed that many software engineers or developers struggle with implementing automated testing or mocking application dependencies or collaborators effectively, which often leads to troubleshooting application in production when bugs occur. If you have any question, feel free to drop a question in the Discord channel. I'm excited to help you gain this valuable skill. Let's head over to the first module. In this lesson, let's define what an automated test is and also discuss the importance of automated testing and why it should be a fundamental part of your development process. The less time it takes to get feedback once you have written code, the more predictable your development process will be. For example, to create a check password function in an authentication flow, a developer who is manually testing the application will have to first create a route, then create a login controller, which then calls check password function. The controller will call the check password function with the password supplied by the user. The check password function then checks the supplied password against the hash password and returns true or false. The developer has to go through all these steps before getting feedback on whether the check password function works or not. In the case of automated testing, the test will execute the function, check the returned value and give feedback to the developer in a very short time. Automated tests are more predictable because it will run the same instructions as many times as the developer wants and produce the same results while the manual tests are not equally as predictable because it gives room for human errors. Each time the tests run, automated tests can exercise the check password function using different arguments. Another advantage of automated tests is that it guarantees that the same steps will be followed every time, eliminating human error. If the developer has to go through several steps before checking if a function works, it is possible to skip a step in the process. And then when we experience errors, we cannot guarantee that the error is from the check password function or from any of the manual steps we used to set up the testing scenario. Writing tests helps those who will touch that part of the code base next. Automated tests are useful for developer collaboration and help reduce regression. Automated tests also help improve developer productivity. With that said, getting started might be time consuming, but the more you run the test, the more value you get from it. Writing tests have a cost, which is added code to write and maintain, but the benefits far outweigh the added costs, especially in projects that need to be operated and maintained for many years. Let's talk about the testing pyramid, a framework for organizing your automated tests. The testing pyramid was originally proposed by Mike Kohn in his Succeeding with Agile book published in 2009. The testing pyramid is a popular way to think about testing because it provides a mental framework for thinking about tests and classifying them. The traditional testing pyramid is divided into three levels. At the bottom, you have unit tests. As the name suggests, these validate atomic units of code, which are usually functions or procedures or methods in OOP. These tests are the smallest and most granular and they test individual functions or classes. Unit tests provide the quickest feedback and highest confidence in isolated code. At the middle, you have service tests. These tests are larger than unit tests and they test the interactions between different functions or units. They ensure individual functions or classes work together as intended. Service tests validate isolated pieces of business logic. At the top, you have the UI tests, which verify functionality from a user's perspective by interacting with the app's interface. These tests are the largest and most comprehensive and they test the user interface of your application. It's also important to note that these tests are crucial but slow and they provide the highest guarantee. This categorization based on targets, which are functions, service, or interface can be problematic. And instead, I suggest separating tests based on scope. In the revised testing pyramid, it is advised that you separate tests based on their scope and how frequently they run. In the revised testing pyramid, 
the larger scope is at the top with end-to-end -end tests. This simulates full user journeys through the app interface or API containing many moving parts. Below the end-to-end -end test are integration tests which combine units into modules and services to test interactions. And at the bottom, you have unit tests which has the smallest scope, run very fast, and they validate individual functions or classes in isolation. It is important to note that tests don't neatly fit into one category or the other. Many will blend between different levels of this pyramid. The overall goal is to guide our testing efforts and build a mental framework of the different types of tests that we have and how to properly classify them. In this lesson, we will learn about unit testing, a crucial aspect of software development. We will explore what unit testing is, the different approaches to unit testing, and how we can use test doubles to run tests in isolation. So let's dive in. Unit testing is the process of verifying small independent pieces of code known as units. These units can be functions, methods, or even classes. The purpose of unit testing is to ensure that each unit performs as expected and functions correctly. Unit testing possesses several key attributes. Firstly, it verifies the small pieces of code, allowing developers to focus on specific functionality. Secondly, it executes tests quickly, allowing for rapid feedback on the code's behavior. And thirdly, it does so in an isolated manner. The first two points here are pretty non-controversial. The third point is where people have vastly different opinions. We'll review what this all means. One approach emphasizes testing units in isolation from their dependencies. This approach involves using test doubles, such as mocks or stubs, to simulate the behavior of those dependencies and isolate the unit under test. Imagine we're testing a function with several dependencies it relies on. On the left, the test case needs to set up and run the entire system including all the helpers or dependencies just to test the function. On the right, we use test doubles to replace the dependencies. You may ask what are test doubles? A simple analogy to understand what test doubles are, just as stun double ensures the safety of our actor while filming a dangerous scene, test doubles are replacements for our dependencies or collaborators. Test doubles are simplified versions that mimic the essential behavior of the real helpers or dependencies but are much faster and easier to set up. By isolating the unit from its dependencies, we can focus solely on testing the unit behavior without worrying about the correctness of other components it relies on. In the other approach to unit testing, it's not the code that needs to be tested in an isolated manner. Rather, unit tests themselves should be run in isolation from each other. To do this, we need to make sure that different tests do not have a shared state Typical example of such a shared state will be out of process dependencies like the database or the file system. Having talked about the attributes of a unit test, you might ask, what exactly is a unit? A unit can be defined as the smallest testable part of an application. A unit can be a single function, a method, or even a small portion of code that performs a specific task. In object oriented programming, a unit will be a class. While in a programming language like JavaScript, a unit can be a single function. A good unit test will point out poor code quality. Basically, if you find a piece of code hard to test, it means it needs improvement. In the next lesson, we'll further discuss unit testing, specifically entry and exit points, and how these inform how you test a unit. In this lesson, we will explore the importance of identifying the entry and exit points in the unit of work and how to test them effectively. In unit testing, a unit of work can be a single function or a module. Regardless of its size, every unit of work has an entry point that can be triggered from the outside and it always ends up doing something useful. 
If a unit of work doesn't do anything useful, it's better to remove it from our code base. When testing a unit of work, there are several aspects to consider. Firstly, we test for the return type. This means we verify that the unit of work returns the expected type of value, such as the data structure. Secondly, if the unit of work alters the state of the system, we need to test for state mutation. This involves checking whether the unit of work modifies the relevant variables, objects, or data structures in the expected way. Lastly, if the unit of work calls a third party dependency, we need to test for quality that function and the arguments used. This ensures that the unit of work interacts correctly with external components and passes the appropriate arguments to them. Let's look at some examples to better understand these testing aspects. Suppose we have a function that calculates the sum of two numbers. In this case, the return type would be the sum of the two numbers. We can write a test to verify that the function returns the expected result. Next, let's consider a function that increments a counter variable. Here, we need to test for state mutation by checking if the counter variable has been incremented correctly. The same goes for a system under units that interacts with the database. We also need to check the database for data mutation. Finally, imagine a function that sends an email using a third party library. In this case, we need to test that the function calls the appropriate third party function and passes the correct argument. To summarize, when unit testing, it's crucial to identify the entry and exit points of a unit of work. We test for the return type, state mutation if applicable, and also ensure that any interactions with third party libraries are correctly tested. By thoroughly testing these aspects, we can have confidence that our units of work are functioning as expected. Thanks for watching. If you want to keep learning, click the link in the description below. This course is divided into five modules. In the first module, we'll discuss the importance and benefits of automated testing. We'll install application dependencies, including Jest, and explore basic assertions. In the second module, you will learn about unit testing and also how to name and structure your test cases. You will learn about test isolation and test doubles such as spies, stops and mocks and how you can use these in Jest. In the third module, you will learn about integration testing, how to test your HTTP endpoints, HTTP controller and middleware functions and also HTTP API integrations. In the fourth module, you will learn about test containers, which are lightweight throwaway instances of application dependency or any application dependency that can run in the Docker container. You will also learn how to test third-party API integrations using NOC and Jest. In the fifth module, you will implement Git hooks, which runs your test every time you make a Git commit. You would also learn how to use GitHub Actions to run your test in a CI-CD pipeline environment. We'll design a testing strategy using Agile Testing Quadrant to design maintainable test suites.